Dr. Shine, the guy that cut me open, and I believe that probably might have saved my bodybuilding career. Um, it's currently been three and a half months now since the surgery. Let's kind of unfold the whole situation from the injury. I know you've already kind of heard it already, but like from the first contact point of this whole situation for me. Right, yes. Um, I think one of your colleagues, Adam Silver, uh, called me up and said, look, I've got a, a monster bodybuilder colleague who's coming in. He's completely tore his specs. And I, he sent me the video as well of your, of your injury. I still haven't watched it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, when I looked at that video, I was like, oh, that's pretty serious. That's, that's a nasty injury. And uh, least did I know that uh, this gentleman is going to be turning up in my hospital. <laughs> anyway, it was good to see Ryan. Uh, he was very stressed. Uh, of course, it is a very, very serious injury. Um, and uh, yes, we went through the surgical procedure. Uh, it took a couple of hours. It was, uh, you know, I've seen uh, uh, biceps and uh, uh, pectoralis major injuries uh, before, but nothing like what uh, happened to Ryan. Uh, he had almost completely detached and tore off his pecs and it was a matter of uh, reconstructing the whole uh, pecs and uh, trying to retain shape and trying to reattach it back. Um, he had solid bone but eventually we got there in the end um, and uh, yes it was a very very slow rehabilitation process. It took time and I was trying to uh, very uh, be very patient uh, so that uh, uh, Ryan gets the best out of his uh, recovery. He was very diligent as well. He was uh, being cautious at the same time. Uh, he was very inquisitive. He, he really wanted to know intricate details and I was very happy with that. What he means is every time I come and see him, I ask him 50 questions. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. It's good because he understood uh, the do's and don'ts and, and it, w it, mean, it means a lot because if patients understand what are they not supposed to do and what they can do, it makes a big difference and uh, he was very, very positive. He came across as very positive um, to me, which I think when you discuss treatments and options and, and uh, recovery programs and uh, if patients are very negative in the beginning, uh, it becomes very difficult, the recovery process. But uh, I very much appreciate Ryan for being extremely uh, uh, strong and uh, positive. Uh, I think he had good support from his uh, fans and friends, which I think mattered a lot. I, I know we can sit here and say it was very positive, but originally at the start it really was not. Um, mm. Going back from the original incident, I kind of, after it happened, kind of felt like my life was over and. I didn't really know what was going to happen after that, but obviously it unfolded and we ended up in hospital. Um, obviously, I never had any surgery ever in my life before and that was extremely painful <laughs> mentally and obviously actually too. Uh, I, I, I remember going to the surgery with him and they were, I was all drugged up and I could barely talk and whatnot, but I remember them making me lay onto this metal bed and lay down and I started freaking out, really, really, really freaking out. And I was like, no, I can't do this, can't do this. And then he was like, it's okay, it's okay, I'm just going to give you some painkillers. And then that was it. I don't remember anything else. So yes. I went back. <laughs> and yes. I, to be honest, if he hadn't have done that, I think I would have ran out because I was really scared and really, really terrified of the whole thing. Um, kind of... Definitely got a lot better than I thought. Uh, obviously the surgery went pretty badly, I, well, well, but like badly, I think in terms of your eyes, it was kind of worse inside than maybe you thought. Mm -hmm. um, as he said before, a lot of surgeons might have said it was irreparable and given up. Um, and he also said that it took a lot longer than normal. Um, and I was in hospital for a long time afterwards. I really didn't feel very well. My body, my legs, everything just kind of gave up on me. I was extremely swollen, as you've already seen. I was very, very bruised. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's just from the whole trauma, right? My body just kind of shut yes, down. Yes, yes. You had a huge hematoma. Uh, I remember uh, two kidney dishes full of... Uh... He just showed me 
these bowls of blood and said and, this was from uh, you. <laughs> and I think uh, for me it was very important uh, uh, that he didn't get an infection because there was significant soft tissue swelling, hematoma. I almost had uh, two dishes full of uh, clots I had to take out before starting the repair procedure. Um, and yes. Uh, and how does that even like, I, I, I'm so intrigued, like we said, like when you're first cutting my skin open, like do, does the blood come out or how does it work? Yes. Like, it does, just like pours out. It just, it's because the, the, the bleeding and, and you, you remember your, uh, every minute you were telling me, I can feel it's getting bigger yeah. and bigger. So there was a bleeder within those torn muscles, a couple of bleeders, uh, which were bleeding out, which were bleeding out and causing the hematoma to expand. So the moment you make that incision, is just all out. That's why I did think that. Because yeah. obviously, after the injury happened, I know obviously we contacted you and whatnot, but we kind of didn't think it was that serious and ended up going home and I was laying on, on the bed and then I, like, it, obviously I had this gap here and then like I, it was cramping and I could see it literally pulling across my body in front of my eyes. And then obviously I came to the hospital, I was like, this needs to be done now. And then, like, like as we were sat here, it was kind of like swelling out, swelling up, yeah. touching my neck. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. like this. He was, he was getting a lot of soft tissue blebs because of the pressure underneath. Yes, so that, for me, was... I did think that because you can see that swelling. As soon as, is it like popping a balloon? As soon as you pop the skin, it just pours out. Is that how it works? Yes. I did think so. I'm so glad you said that, actually. I was very intrigued. But then, obviously, you kind of have to remove the blood to be able to see what's going on, right? And to see where the bleeders are, stop those bleeders, and then get a fresh area, fresh look at it, and then begin the reconstructive process. We're also forgetting a very important part here, that actually he did this surgery without having an MRI scan, didn't you? Because yes. they, I couldn't fit in the machine. We thought we might be able to, we did try for about two hours, but we couldn't get in there, so they we did tried a... tried twice to fit him into an MRI machine, he wouldn't fit in. So what, what was the scan they did? Just an a, ultrasound. Ultrasound. Yeah. And they even said that because there's so much blood that it's not that good, right? Yes. So it was a decision making based on the video that I was sent. Yeah. And but you, from agony. the video you saw, it was well, pretty obvious, yes, right? It is pretty obvious. Yes. I still haven't watched it. I don't think I will for a long time. <laughs> but uh, again, like there was just so many things that this went wrong, and we couldn't get in there, couldn't see what was actually wrong, and then. Obviously, I'm in so much pain, like, I need it done now. And then, obviously, what was it, 25 hours after the injury, he did it, which is crazy. Okay, so then after this, we, we had the surgery, I left the hospital, and we were kind of, I was in a sling, and then we finally got out of the sling a little bit, and I could move my arm, and then I actually tore it again, which was absolutely, oh, don't even talk to me about it, because <laughs> I was really in a super bad way. As he knows, I didn't even talk to anyone. I, I was ringing him, he didn't answer. I just turned up, walked in straight in his office, and I was like crying. I was in so much pain, and I was just, I was, I was screaming at my girlfriend, saying that I'm just torn again. She was like, no, it hasn't, no, it's not. And I was like, it is, it is. You know, I was, I was on a mission to come and see him, because I was like, I didn't know what else to do. And yeah. We came here, they scanned it, and it was like a minor muscle minor, tear again. Yeah, yeah, very small tear, very, it was not exactly a tear of the the repair process, but just a small muscle fiber, which, which I think, you know, you got plenty. <laughs> but again, it was so painful. You know, I it's, went from being able to move my arm to back in the sling for another three weeks. I can yes. move, and yes. it just really like when something happens like this, and then you're finally climbing out of the hole, and you're like <sighs> being able to breathe again, and then being put back in the hole was just really, really hit me hard. And then I finally got through that second tear, and then. I had a load of blisters come up under my armpit and they turned into a cyst and then yes. he had to cut the whatever it was out. We don't really know what it was, do we? It was a cyst. It was yeah. a cyst, yeah. And uh, we had to clear up the cyst, um, let it drain out, started healing. Um, we did some chemical quarry because it was getting about too much healing or too much granulation tissue. And then finally uh, closed up uh, about a week ago. Mm. and then took the stitches out today so it looks good today so yeah i've now got the stitches yeah. out and hopefully oh, that'll yeah. be it yeah but fingers crossed what is it mashallah yes. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks ago uh marco the 
physio, again, recommended to me by Dr. Shine. He's been brilliant, uh, very good, very real, you know, and like not, not be around the bush, kind of my sort of personality too, so we can get on very well. And he told me to pretty much do every exercise I can in the gym, uh, obviously being careful with speed, weight, etc. but I was still very, very, I know I'm very focused on, on getting back, but I was still very scared, you know, like even when I'm pressing, I'm, I'm like this, trying to keep this in and I'm trying, struggling, trying to extend out and do certain movements like rear delt exercises. I was really scared on trying to contract back because it was stretching in my head and I don't know, there's a lot of things that's very difficult, but the last week in terms of like me in the gym has been very successful and I feel like I'm being able to do a lot more exercises now. I know the weight is very much reduced, but uh, it's getting there. The only thing that's struggling with is like the whole time the injury was on, I was in a cast, I was still training this arm as everyone see in my legs, but I couldn't, I couldn't train this, this pec. I don't know, it was more mental. And now, like, again, obviously, this, they're both shrunk, and this one's still very soft. I still struggle now to train it. Um, I think it will take time. Okay. But even with contracting the injured pec, it's, it's coming back slowly as more, uh, more of a contraction, I guess. Is that more mm -hmm. mental, or is that actual muscle? It'll take some time. Yeah, yeah but I still can't contract it as hard as I thought I would be able to. Um, because and it the, shakes a lot. It was really shaky, but it's slowly getting it's less slowly, and less, slowly. you know? There's a lot of healing going on, a lot of healing going on. And uh, uh, once the mus muscles are conditioned and back to their original length, and then you start training them, and then you'll feel that you have the power and your contraction comes back. I did think that. And I also thought that maybe it's a, it's a mental thing, right? Your body's kind of telling you not to use it mm. because it, it has been injured. Is that correct? Yeah, there is a, there's always that fear and, a, uh, and anxiety. But I think it works good in the first couple of months because it protects you from doing from stupid stuff. Right? It and then it goes. Quite a lot of people watching this might know that when you have this sort of injury, you end up normally with a big hole in your pec uh, because the muscle fibers just tear that way and you end up with a big injury like that. But as of right now, praying, I don't have a hole in my pec, which is very, very good. It means that I will hopefully be able to get back to bodybuilding at the top level. I currently just have like a loss of muscle mass, you know, obviously <laughs> like here, there's kind of a gap, which I don't have on this side. And hopefully this is just because I can't use it. And I'm hoping that once I can train my shoulder and my pec again, that this kind of like gap we'll come back. will fill in, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that one day you'll see me on stage and you, and they'll be like, which pec did he tear? And that's kind of, you know, well, it's, it's, it's something really big for me. It's kind of, Obviously, I was always driven by bodybuilding, and now I'm kind of driven to come back from this because uh, there's been a few people that have, but they were kind of already right at the top of bodybuilding. You know, it was kind of at the top of bodybuilding, had an injury, and was still there. I want to see if I could be the first person ever to be getting to the top and have a big injury like this and still be able to do it, you know, because a lot of people have said that it's going to be impossible. So I'm very driven on trying to show them that I can do it. Um, what do you think, how does it look compared to how you thought it would look? Does it look better? Does it look worse? Um, no, I think you, 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 it's been an incredible recovery, to be honest. Uh, sometimes we as surgeons, we always expect, uh, we all depend on the body's biology for the healing process. We can do all this re re repair and reconstructive work. And if the body doesn't heal or the biology fails, then that's going to be a problem. So it's an incredible recovery, in my opinion. And you know, to get where you are at this stage with uh, very minimal muscle damage, uh, I think uh, you've done very well. Thank or you. Rather, we did very well. <laughs> Maybe so. I just, a lot of people are asking me will I ever be able to make a full recovery? And I don't really know if it's something I, I, haven't, I haven't answered, or maybe you can answer. Uh, because obviously we know that it came off the tendon, there was no tendon, right? And now we don't really have a tendon or whatever is there. Do you think that at, in time, people were saying, oh, you come back stronger, you know, but what is the scientific point behind this? Like, will this be as strong as my other pet? Can it be stronger? Have I always got to be careful? We're not talking about look, we're talking about how, like how much power that, that muscle can put out and be and withstand. Um, yes, it, we always wanted to come back to 100%. 
and that's how that's why we do all this reconstruction and repair work but then uh, there's there's always going to be a difference there's always going to be a difference uh, but then how the biology heals and uh, when we reattach it into the bone then there's a remodeling process the body is an amazing healing machine and if you can heal and remodel back to how it ought to become then we're good and eventually when you let's say sometimes some of these injuries take anything between nine months to 12 months sometimes a little more to get back to that remodeling stages because remodeling is something that is a continuous and slow process you're you're you are uh, you are encouraging the body to remodel in ways you want to so that happens over a period of time that doesn't happen like short uh, yeah with a simple reattachment or reconstruction process. That has to, uh, as a process that consolidates and uh, progresses over a period of uh, nine to 12 months, or maybe even more. I know that like right now, my, my pec is attached to what that's now attached to the bone? What, yes. what, what, what is, how is it attached? It's attached to the bone. We had to, uh, with what? Uh, we had to use uh, fiber, fiber wires, fiber loops, um, and we had to reconstruct uh, uh, the, the uh, a, a sort of a, a tendon. Uh, what, what's uh, it made out of? Um, it's got what we call material. It's got artificial biomaterial, which allows uh, growth of fibroblasts into it, and that will allow it, of course, to become more, more, more sort of biologic. So it allows more uh, collagenous uh, material going in becoming more and more tendon-like, so it develops into a tendon. So For example, uh, if there was a, let's say, late presentation of such, such injuries, severe injuries, where it's presented a couple of months late, there's no way we can do that. So we end up having to harvest some tendons from elsewhere and use that to reconstruct uh, uh, a tendon. So the tendon is like half muscle, half ex ex extra stuff? Yes biosynthetic materials. And it can, what you're saying over the years, it, it will kind of grow itself and maybe and become more of a tendon. Yeah, yes. Interesting, I didn't actually know that. In terms of the way it looks, um, this was the best thing you could do, right? Yes, absolutely. And I think we did very well. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> probably, you definitely, I, I struggle to say, but definitely better than I thought. Yes. Um, obviously, I look in the mirror and it's not what I want to see because of, I don't know what, like the way I look now compared to what I did, but after what has happened and gone through, it's definitely better than I thought was going to happen. Yeah. I don't really do anything else apart from bodybuilding and not being able to do what I felt like I was put on the planet to do has been very hard in every way possible. And I, it's, it's different for like yourself, most other people watching, you know, I, I, the way I look at my body is totally different from everyone else. And I, you, know, you look okay, you don't look that much different, but I like, it looks so bad to me, like it's like a, it's like highlighted, you know. I can just, I know everyone else can laugh. I'm like, huh? But like seriously, and it's a, it's a very big problem in my head every day right now. And I'm just trying to use that like kind of bad energy to put everything I can into making it look as good as possible because I, I want to be able to get on stage again and people go, which peck did he tear? You know, like that's yeah. it's kind of in my heart right now, and I want to be able to do that as well as I can. And, but so, again, so a lot of people have said to me, you shouldn't be training because, you know, this these anchors or what, whatnot can, can rip out, which obviously is true. But like, what's the likelihood of that? Well, I'm, I'm not using heavy weights at all, but what, yeah, what, yeah. what is the likelihood we, of that? We need to be um, doing exercise in a very, very controlled setting. You know, no heavy weights at all. Um, gradual, gradual, gradual stretches. This is where that remodeling and consolidation process happens. Uh, yes, your 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 uh, you know. Uh, let's say, for example, you cut here; it heals. Uh, same thing when we reattach, and it heals into the bone, and that interface then does not require the presence of an anchor. It's healed into the bone, so the bo the anchor can disappear in a year or so, but uh, it's done its job. But then the body is healed how it should. So maybe a year or two, you. I don't know if you could look into my body like that, but if you were to scan it, the anchors would kind of be gone? Yes. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah.
The important question here is, I know obviously most people can say there's too much weight on the bar, this is why the injury happened. Is there more of a scientific thing in your head that, that maybe you might understand a bit more than I or someone else about like why it's all? Is it, or is it just the, the pet couldn't handle it? I think, uh, I think, I'm not sure what really happened in the gym at that time. Uh, I yeah. think there probably was a sudden jump from all an already existing weight which your pec could do to a level of weight where it was just a bit too much. There's a lot of what we call an eccentric pull at that bone tendon interface and where there's significant load going down and then you're trying to push it up. Because you're much stronger on that eccentric, right? Yes. So I, I really don't know because I can't remember the actual rep in my head, but I believe from watching the video, I haven't watched it, like I said, but it tears on the way down, right? Or do I start pressing up? Anyone remember? I think it you, tears you, it on the way going down. down I think going down. When I then... change to press it back up, it's when it, yes, right? Yes, yeah, that's yes, what I thought. Yes. We kind of knew that you were the man to do the job, but in terms of surgery compared to someone that's heavy, heavily muscular compared to a normal human, human being, which is normal size, well, in terms of your physical job and ability to do this, does it make it much more harder? And if you weren't experienced as much as you are in terms of how many surgeries, how long you've been doing this, would this have affected it? You know, if you'd only been a surgeon in a few years, could you have gone, damn, I can't do this? Like, how much does, how much muscle I have and the size of me make a difference for your, your part of your job? Tremendous difference, tremendous difference. Because um, it's very daunting uh, when you have uh, a a reasonably sized human being and, and, and a very muscular person uh, because you're looking at different muscle planes uh, and uh, the virtual size of everything is is, 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 is is very important because it comes in with a lot of planning. You can't just go in and try and find out where everything is because you get lost, right? And then you need, you need uh, trained uh, assistants as well know exactly what's going on because there are retractors and to move muscles out and you know most of your retractors will not work with the uh, individuals who are quite massive so you need uh, you need to be very accurate uh, and uh, uh, yes you don't want to be uh, in a professional person you don't want to be cutting open or making a big size incision to get a a uh, small thing done, but so you've got to work uh, around all those things to, to get well, the best possible outcome without having to see uh, or do major uh, incisions. So it does, it does, it comes with a bit of experience and um, uh, it's, it can be extremely daunting to a, a young surgeon uh, who is, uh, but I think uh, it, it is worthwhile when to see them going back and back into the gym and bang back to competitions. That's what I was, I was also going to say is, I guess as a, as, a, as a surgeon that kind of you fixed me, being someone like me who's so, again, resilient, like has 100% in getting me back to 100%, it must be better for you because there's a lot of people out there, you do the surgery and then they just kind of sit home and you don't really know what goes on and you never see it again. But now like you'll be able to see in however many times you, You'll see me on stage and you're like, I fixed that, you know? Yeah, uh, like, it must be, I don't know, more rewarding, but I don't know, do you have more interest in it? Because you can see, like, how much it means to me, especially like this. So, before the surgery, I'm, like, begging him with my life, like, do as well as you can, make sure it looks okay, and I have no scar, you know? Like, I'm much bigger, my muscle's much bigger than a normal person, yet I'm telling him to make it as small as possible. It's kind of asking for a double-edged sword, really, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it is it is extremely gratifying uh, uh, mentally and by 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 heart. Uh, I I do this work that way. For me, this work is uh, uh, has to be uh, both mentally and uh, uh, you know uh, satisfying, gratifying, gratifying in every aspect. So, for me to see you get back on the stage would be would mean everything. All that hard work that we did all that hard work you went through, uh, I think that pays off. I was really scared, it really, it was really hard for me and especially not being at home with my mom and dad and my family and 
being in a, a country that's not mm. English speaking makes things more daunting, right? Um, obviously, I got sent to you, and I just want to say that um, you, you've been the best you could have possibly been. Uh, I'm going to get emotional now. <laughs> because Thank you. He, he really has been very, very good, and I'm crying. <laughs> And it means a lot to me because, as you can tell, I get very emotionally invested in everything. And yeah, yeah. I don't really know. I, I, like, like we said before, I would have been very worried if, if someone had, had cut me open and come back and said, look, I can't fix it. And I feel like maybe it was a lot harder than you're kind of saying it was. And um, I think you didn't give up. And that's, yes, that's of course, of course, of course. And just if anyone needs any surgery, this, this is your man. <laughs> <laughs> you did very well. Thank you so you much. did very well, Ryan. It's amazing. It's amazing to see you get back to, and it you'd make everyone proud when you go back on stage there. 